Hello everybody, Shift Read Yen, and today we'll be doing a guide on Heroes Hour. So I saw a bunch of people started playing this game, me included, and I decided to do a guide on the basics of the game because this game is pretty complex and there are a lot of things that are pretty much basic and um, you, if, if somebody tells you about them, you will start realizing them and understand them a lot faster than uh, trying to read every single thing because there are so many things here to read up, so many skills, abilities, classes, races and what else. So I decided to do a quick guide on mostly the basics of the game and also what exactly is happening with the castle because the castle part of this game is not really that simple. So yeah, I decided to do that. So without further ado, let's go here into the combat, just to show you real quick what the combat looks like. The game is an auto butler, so the combat pretty much is you have a bunch of units, the enemies have a bunch of units. Let me just showcase you here in the screamish mode, because I'm not going to showcase combat when I will go into the campaign, because I want to showcase other things in the campaign. So this is what the combat looks like. I have my melee units, I have my ranged units, the enemy has their units. Let's speed it up. And uh, they will be fighting on their own, and they're going to be... You know, fighting on their own, that's it pretty much. You can bring your units back, you can give them basic commands. But uh, most of the time, most of the combat's gonna be like on their own. You don't really need to do anything. For example, this is a win. There's like no reason. I'm, I'm, there's like, I might even lose because I'm moving, because I'm moving my units. Because most of the time when the mutants start moving, they might not shoot, they might do a bunch of things. So that's the combat. Okay, uh, let me, let me now go over the whole uh, main game. So to speak. So let's go into duel, the smallest possible map. Let's go order because they're the simplest one. Let's just pick any random hero here. Won't really matter for now. And uh, let's begin with the game right away. Because what I really want to talk about here is the buildings. And uh, the buildings and also um, the castle. Because uh, those are the most uh, quote-unquote complex things. Which if somebody just tells you what, what is happening. You will really quickly realize that it's not really that complex. So in this game you have a hero. Uh, which you start with, you have to choose them in the to choose them in the beginning. But uh, I will go into heroes later on. For now, let's just say we have one hero. The hero has some stats. Stats are damage, defense, knowledge, uh, spell power, luck, and morale. Um, they are just helping the hero be stronger. I mean, <laughs> obviously, attack and defense is what they say. Knowledge is a very important stat. What knowledge does is gives you more max mana and mana regen, and that's really important because. Your heroes in the fight I just showed you before can cast spells within the fight and um, you need mana to do that and you get mana each day. So um, knowledge is important. Spell power, not really that much, only if you're a, a spellcaster hero because the thing with knowledge is you can summon pets with, uh, with the spells and having mana is overall always good while spell power depends on the hero. Luck is gonna be something like crit chance and a higher chance to do damage and morale is, you know, chance for give your movement, giving you movement speed and attack speed. That's everything about the hero. Every hero has a skill tree and abilities, but I will be explaining them later on. You just have to know that in the very beginning, when I had to choose between six heroes, the thing I was choosing, the, the heroes were like split in three and three, and the, all the, the triplets, the top three and the bottom three have different skills on this one. So rallying is the first three heroes had rallying, the second three heroes had something else. And then each one of those three heroes has a different right skill. So that's the only thing you have to really know that you start with those. And then if you want to go like through everything, it will take you some more time. I will come back to this uh, at the end of what I'm doing right now. So that is the hero real quick. Uh, in this game, it's a turn-based RPG, so to speak, here on the world. Uh, people say that it's like um, Swords and Might and Magic or something like that. Uh, but I haven't played that game, so I can't really tell. But uh, here are your resources. This is gold. This is like stone and wood. These are the easy resources to get. And these are the hard resources to get. Mercury, crystal and sulfur. Uh, another um, way you can realize that these are the easy and these are the hard ones. Is that if you go over here. Once captured gives one mercury each day. This here says one sulfur each day. These are the rare resources. If it was wood. Right now I don't have access to wood. But if there was wood it would give us two per day. So we would get it easier. There's that. So, what we do in this game is we have a hero over here which has is the hero as I said and it also has its units with it. So, for example, before I showed you I have like some spearmen and some uh, archers. Here I have marksmen and militia. So, if I go into a fight with this guy, he will have these as his army. And how you improve this army, I'm going to say in a bit, but what you do uh, actually let me show right away what how you improve this army. You go into your castle you are not forced to be in the castle, you can be even outside your castle because most of the people I've seen, not most, some people I've seen 
uh, try to buy within the castle. You don't need to be in the castle. You just open the castle. This is the castle and its buildings. And this is, I would say, the shop. Okay, this uh, is not your army. This is what army you can buy. Uh, I will call it shop from here on out because uh, it pretty much works like a shop. It shows you that um, the militia costs 15 gold and you can create as many as you want. But this is the supply. So if this ever gets to zero, you cannot build anymore. And now I have built militia. This is now my garrison. Here the units are actually mine. So these are my units. So there are two ways to actually use this unit. One, you, one way is to run back into here with your, um, you know, with your uh, hero and then pick them up. Another thing you can do, which uh, for some reason nobody also mentioned this either, is that you can actually let those units like move on their own. For example, if I go in the castle, I can send them out and now they're on the world. And as you can see, they also have some steps on their own. These are how much you can move. So I can move 12 more steps. These units can move my five more steps so I can use them and make them actually combine with my army. I'm not really forced to actually go back to the castle. And as you see, this doesn't cost me anything. So there's like no reason to go back to the castle completely. Uh, other than some very specific times, well, which I will tell you in a bit. So there's that. That's how you build up your army. Now, if you see here, I have 26 militia and 7 archers. So that's that. Now, um, if you go through all the fights around, for example, here's an impossible fight, here's another impossible fight, here's an impossible fight. All these fights are near impossible, impossible. The better your army becomes and your hero becomes, the more these fights are gonna read something, uh, show something different. This could have uh, read normal, this could have read easy, instead of near impossible. And all those fights get actually changed in accordance to how powerful you yourself are. So there's that about the army composition and stuff. Let me now go into this build, this uh, whole UI. This, uh, the building of the castle. This is very simple. It is actually complex, but it is simple. What I'm trying to say here is that if somebody explains you, I'm gonna allow, start explaining this and you will realize that it's not really that complex because if you start this thing, you will start being like, okay, what is this? What is that? Oh man, so many things to read. Okay, let me tell you what's happening here. So the first thing you have to remember is that to remember the first thing that you can instantly know is that every single castle has some very similar things the things that are similar in every single castle in every race is this very left side is always plaza of order uh, center of order palace of order and empire of order these things might be called something else in other races but in all of the races it's just gold gain gold gain gold gain gold gain. it's the same for everybody okay this here the marketplace is not the same for everybody uh, everybody has a marketplace but it's all not always here and actually, it's uh, very rarely here. Um, but let me go one at a time so that I don't mix you guys up. <clears throat> As I said, very left side is the gold gain. This is always the same. One, two, three, four. So this is always at this place. This is at this place and this at this place. Now, why I'm saying this is uh, is going to come up in a bit. The other thing that's always the same is the fort. It's here, here, and here. Uh, I will tell, tell you in a bit what the fort does because you are missing some info so that I don't mix you up. And then the other thing that's always the same is the infirmary and the hospital. Infirmary and the hospital is not always at, the, at this uh, column, so to speak. It might be here, it might be here. It's never in the third column and never the first column as those are the fort upgrades and the gold gain upgrades. But the infirmary plus the hospital, this line, is always somewhere around. And uh, there might or might not be something in between. And then the last thing that is always the same in most of the classes, uh, races, is the Guild of Mages, which gives you spells for your hero and also permanent spell power. So and this is something that you actually need to bring your hero up to the very door of the castle. So this is something you need to actually bring your hero back to get. Uh, this also has another upgrade like this one, which is pretty much the same, but this gives knowledge and other skills. So these two things also exist in almost every single race okay um now those are the very simple things that exist on everything and you can remember and also the tavern that also exists on everybody and the tavern is so that you can get another hero so to speak let's you know build a hero right now let's build a tavern right away and get a hero by the way i would actually you know i will come back into guiding you how what you should do in a bit but uh, just remember that tavern is always here for a hero and it's really important to buy the tavern by the way Left is money, over here is fort upgrades, and then there's firmery. Now, that is the very basics. Now we go to the second most basic thing in the game, which is also really simple. Um, as, you, as I said, over here is the shop. And if you want to be able to buy other units other than, you know, the militia, and want to start buying archmen, uh, marksmen, or these guys, or these guys, or pretty much anybody over here, the only thing you have to do is go and find the building. By the way, let me... 
let me pass the turn here. So that I can, I don't care what's happening around the world. Let me pass the turn so I can upgrade another building. So if you want to be able to buy marksmen, the only thing you have to do is find the building that's selling marksmen. For example, here, the armory is selling marksmen. If I want to buy marksmen, I just have to upgrade this. This is the same for all the heroes. These very first units, the tier 1 units or the tier 0, zero whatever you want to call them. Let's call these tier 0, these tier 1 and these tier 2. Uh, the tier 0 units always, the first, the very first, the very left top unit is always already upgraded the shop is already upgraded the shop is already bought so to speak the, the castle is upgraded and uh, the second unit over here you always have access at the tier zero zone so at the very top it, it is one of the first two upgrades you can buy so in the very first start of the game you can buy the tavern the armory or the upgrade barracks there might be some uh, races that have something up here uh, a fifth building or a sixth building because uh, they have unique buildings or something but these are always the same these four are always the same for everybody tier zero units uh, upgrade or tier zero units to unlock so if i unlock this thing for example now i have access to buying marksmen and i can just buy them all so now i have 20 marksmen and 26 militia as simple as that so if you're in the castle it's obviously instantly bringing your army in otherwise they would be here in the garrison and then you would have to come in the castle or as i said or you have to walk them towards your hero to combine the armies so that's what that does. Now you would say, okay, when does this shop replenish? This shop replenishes armies whenever this whole thing goes off. So when a week passes, these things replenish. And the amount they replenish is written over here. You can see base growth is 15. That is how it is written in this game. So base growth means how many more of those units are going to be in the shop the next time the week passes. Um, so there's that about buying units now for those units which are dual let me also showcase this let me end the turn here there is like no reason to wait let the enemies move i don't care so for those units that are dual where you see two next to each other you can see here the blacksmith is the building needed to actually upgrade those uh, to buy them so when i up buy the blacksmith i will get the choice to go either for the strong arm, arm or the swordsman or whatever these two units are depending on the race for example and uh what this is going to do is it's going to make the shop sell only that unit. So I can either make the shop sell seven swordsmen every round or I can make the castle, the shop, sell five strong garm every round. So let's, for example, go for the swordsman. Now, if I, let's say, let's create some, okay? And then you cho cho change your mind. You can change the unit here. There's like no problem. But if you do this, this is going to become zero. So the strongmen are not going to get sold. It doesn't matter. Let's just do it. And then if you change mind again, then the other one is also going to become zero. So just a tip right away. If you have some of these buildings and want to change them, first buy every single unit from this, from the from the already chosen unit, and then change the unit you want to get produced the next week. As I said, when I say produced, I mean they're going to get uh, stocked up on the market and then you have to buy it from the shop. So there's that. Uh, as you realize, you do not really get a lot of army real quick because uh, this is my army for the whole week. Uh, maybe I could buy... Where is this? Maybe I could buy to the chapel here. Maybe I could buy the chapel on a later week, like a bit later, and then I could use the monk. But um, yeah, overall, you're not going to get that big of armies. By the way, my army is big enough for these fights to not now be hard. <laughs> And challenging, you see, they change dynamically depending on your army composition. And uh, yeah, so uh, because you actually don't really get a lot of units, I mean, you just get whatever you get, and then at the end of the week, we had more. And because you also have a second hero at some point, let's buy him right now, because you also have a second hero sometimes, uh, you will need to have a bunch of units and to be able to have a bunch of units. And for that to happen, you will buy the infirmary. What the infirmary does is very simply it, uh, by the way, the infirmary works retroactively. So even if uh, what I'm about to say to you, actually, let's let's take this in order. So the, what the infirmary does is when you when you, your units die, they have a 50% chance to actually go over the infirmary and then they will slowly trickle in back to the shop, not on your garrison, to the shop. So if you lose like... 20 militia 10 of those militia maybe 18 maybe 12 maybe 8 maybe 2 it doesn't matter you know it's a bit random although it feels like it's mostly pseudo random so it feels like most of the time actually fifth half half of them come back so i'm not exactly sure about the randomness of this either way it doesn't matter let's say 10 militia uh, 20 militia die 20 come back to the infirmary then at the next day not week day so if you press pass one or two militia are gonna get added to the shop 
And then one day later, another one or two militia is going to get added to the shop and they will slowly trickle in from the infirmary back into the shop and then you can buy them again. That might sound a bit stupid because, you know, infirmary should save them and whatever, but uh, trust me, you will need to do this. You will need to have the infirmary active so that you can buy some more units to recycle your units all the time to be able to fight more because trust me when you go over here and like fight somebody by the way you can uh, combine armies let me show you real quickly how does that does it's uh, you just move them over there and then you just combine the armies by the way that's why you also would like to have to your so when you let me go let me first say what i wanted to say these fights have become a lot easier impossible this should have been become easy at this point here this is moderate yeah so when you fight fights, for example, let's go to the moderate fight. I will not go over there because this is going to take some time. But if I go into the moderate fight and lose like 15 uh, units uh, in general, so like 10 militia and fight marks, five marksmen, these fights from challenging are going to become impossible again. So it's really important to have like three or four or five or 10 more units. So the infirmary is really, really, really useful. So buy the infirmary as early as possible. The hospital maybe you don't need to, to get because the hospital, the only thing it does is it makes so that the trickling happens faster but the infirmary is really important in this game especially early game where you have like only 50 units losing 10 of them is gonna make it so that you cannot fight win fights around you and the reason you want to win fights around you is because what you really want to do in this game is go over to all these areas destroy the enemies and then get these um, buildings which for example give you one mercury each day or um, i don't know access to the docks or one sulfur each day or anything pretty much anything here around is really useful uh, the reason you want a second hero by the way is because you want to be you know running around with him to check uh areas so this hero for example is my scout right now he will not get into any fights if he gets into a fight and dies then so be it uh, it's better than losing whole, the whole army and uh, you can click on your other hero and then go over with your mouse to the fights and you can see easy, easy, easy. So you can scout with one hero on the one side and the other on the other side. And if you find an easy fight, then you can like swap them around. It might take you some time, but it will be a lot faster than going with this, this hero to the left, finding only impossible fights and then going with this hero to the right. This is a lot faster, like sending this guy to scout, finding three or four easy areas. And then this hero might have been like over here and you can just move back. And also you will always be moving the scout first so you can scout ahead and then move behind him with the army or just move away from him. So definitely buy a hero as early as possible for that. So that is it for the very, very, very basics. Now, let me tell you something about the castle so that you understand what's happening here and you start to be more easily reading this whole thing and uh, understand what's happening. So, uh, as I said, left side, always gold, middle side, font. Oh, by the way, I didn't, uh, I didn't explain what the font does. What the font for it does and the stronghold and the citadel, these three upgrades, it's, it's pretty much making it so that more units get uh, built at the same time over at the market so if i for example give the fort uh, when you buy this fort upgrade by the way i don't have stone right now so i will not be able to buy it but when you buy the fort upgrade it shows you a unit that you would like to make more of in the shop so for example let's say i buy this fort as i said i cannot do it right now because i don't have ore but uh let's just assume i had this actually can i buy ore you know what let me pass the turn so that i can show it to you yeah, let's, you can like move around. Let's go over here. Let's buy the marketplace. Uh, let's... Uh, oh, by the way, every five or six upgrades, I will show you every when. Every, every few upgrades, you get a free passive for your whole town. This time I got great increases, weekly growth of militia and halberdier. Yeah, that's for example, that means growth. Whenever it says growth, it means how many units of those are going to get um, stocked up in the shop so that you can buy more. Uh, gives a one time boost that makes all your heroes level up and uh, gives plus, plus one luck to all current heroes and whatever it doesn't really matter let's go with the militia for example now if you go over here you will see wait um yeah it actually doesn't instantly reflect what is going to happen but what i wanted to do is actually get some you know get some ore out of the marketplace let the day pass so that you can build another building by the way you can only build one building each day if i didn't say it and over here is where where you can see if uh, when you're gonna get the passive the passives are over here so if i do six town upgrades i will get another passive like this militia one so as i was saying let's upgrade the fort now it sell it tells me which of those do you want to make more of quicker do you want 27 more militia each day do you want 20 more marksmen more each day or do you want nine swordsmen each day 
uh, just to make sure that I'm actually correct about this. Uh, right now, if you go over the upgrade, it still says 13. But uh, if I do like end turn and then do another end turn, now the week is going to pass. And now my shop got refreshed. And as you saw, uh, these guys, instead of being plus 15, which it normally should, they got plus 29 because of the fort upgrade. Uh, no, no, because of the because of this upgrade, because of the militia expert upgrade, and also these guys instead of thirteen were, are actually thirty four. So as you understand, the food actually adds the number up and doesn't just show you the number. It wasn't, um, it wasn't, it it was a an addition, not just uh, the max number. So now I can actually have thirty four marksmen bought right away. So um, yeah, that's uh, pretty nifty, I would say. Let me also explain to you how upgrading unit works and then we should pretty much be done with the very basics. Uh, let's go over to the marketplace. I want to upgrade, for example, the archery. So let's buy like three stones. And now how upgrading works. If I upgrade this, you can see the price over here rising before I press the button. By the way, this actually is true for even units that you haven't bought yet. For example, if I want to buy the Griffin Tower over here, my strongest unit, you can see that before even building this, it shows me that it's going to cost me 2000 gold and one crystal. Or here at the cathedral, it shows you 605 gold and one, one stone and 605 gold and one wood. So you might say, oh, yo, Sift, I want a gallery. And uh, then you go over here and see oh no the cavalry cost one wood to create and i have wood problems so let's maybe create a paladin or crusader or whatever he's called uh, so just keep that in mind too when you are about to upgrade dual things or when you are about to you know pay five thousand gold over here is the cost for sil for sulfur sulfur nine stone and four whatever this thing is mercury and then you are about to buy the bird and the bird costs a crystal and you don't have the crystal so be be worried about that so i was saying about upgrading so if you upgrade the building first thing that happens the the price rises okay by 30 gold now from here on out whenever i i buy those units they're gonna be the upgraded ones this upgrade button here is not for these units. This upgrade button here is for these units. Okay, this upgrade button here, I repeat, is for the units that you already have. So if you want to upgrade your units, they don't norm, they don't uh, retroactively upgrade themselves. You have to actually press this button. And if I press it right now, you will see marksmen will go up. Boom, 27. So that's it about upgrading units. And uh, that's it pretty much about all the basics. Now I will tell you the basics of... Um, I mean, the game basics are done. Now I'll explain to you how this whole thing works because this might be a bit overwhelming. So this thing here is random, okay? Uh, the only thing that is not random in your building, in your tower, in your castle is the, the things I told you. The money, okay? I'm, I'm talking about placement right now, okay? The placement is random. This, 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 these four are always at the same spot. Fort, Stronghold, and Citadel is also at the same spot. And Infirmary with Hospital is always in the same uh line uh, not line um a column so yeah that's that's the only thing that's always the same the rest so for example the barracks here the, the armory the tavern the upgrade smith all of these are only in the same line what i'm trying to, what i'm meaning is you see here our upgrade armory is a pre uh predecessor of court housing okay Right? You see, you see this. Or for example, here you see the chapel is a predecessor to... Actually, the infirm is a predecessor of the chapel. So if you want to, for example, upgrade the engineer workshop, it says require center of order to build. So it requires this thing. And the chapel would read as the hospital requires higher tower level and chapel to build. So this needs this and this needs this to build. This is not always the same every time. Okay, this is like completely random. The only thing that is not random is in which tier the, 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 these things are going to be. So the tavern is going to be here, the armory is going to be here, the barracks are going to be here in this line. Okay, in this line, but not in the same column. The armory might be above the fort another time, or the, uh, the barracks might be above the infirmary. That doesn't mean it, that it's going to become a predecessor. As you see here, the tavern is not the predecessor of the blacksmith. Maybe in another run it might be. So this is random, and these predecessors are also random. For example, you could you could be very lucky, and the house of the counting house here, which says that it gives 250 gold per day, it could be over here at the at the already gold per day upgrades, and then you could have all the upgrades at some place at some at, at the same place, or um, you could be very unlucky, which I also have been in one run. I had the armory, the barracks, and the tavern all be predecessor to each other from the left to the right, 
And because I wanted to get the barracks, I had to get the tavern. So the game forced me to take the tavern first and then I can un unlock the barracks. And then from there, the barracks was also a predecessor of, uh, I think, the Guild of Mages or something. So it was like these three were over here. So that was a really bad uh, randomized building. And sometimes you're lucky too. For example, today we're lucky because uh, the Griffin Tower, as you can see, is not a does not have predecessors at all. Maybe it could have. I have seen this tower over here have a lot of time, a connection here. And then you had to do the whole line until you can unlock this tower. So that is something that you have to keep in mind. This thing here is randomized. And also the last thing that I have to say here is that every... Um, every faction has its own unique buildings. This very particular faction, the Order, for example, the unique buildings it has is this one, the, the Counting House that gives you gold each day, and this one, the Conscription Center, which uh, gives you gold or takes your gold income away, depending on if you want more army or if you want less army. So if you if you don't need your army, you can make it, you can transform it into income. Otherwise, you can like pull the army, uh, get army for free, but lose income. So that's what this does. And uh, the holster here is also a unique building of this order, which says that uh, units, uh, heroes that stop at the town get permanently plus four movement, which is pretty strong, by the way. So you have to buy this too. And, and another one, for example, holster was in between the infirmary and the hospital. So that was really nice for me because I'm always going to the infirmary. Obviously, holsters being here is even better. But uh, the holster being here means that the engineering workshop is not here. So <laughs> there's that. You, you win some, you lose some. Uh, by the way, I forgot to talk about the engineering workshop. I'm always forgetting this thing. Uh, this thing is another upgrade that every single race has. So this is the other upgrade that everybody has. Other than everything I talked about right now, that's like this. Oh, by the way, the mage upgrades are three, not two. And um, the, what the workshop does is it does two things. It opens this area up, which right now I can't really showcase, but I will showcase in a bit. Uh, actually, yeah, let's uh, let's start showcasing that. There's no reason to stay here. Let me showcase my uh, big already running fight. Uh, by the way, a real a real nifty trick here I want to showcase before I go into the other game. Uh, if you want to know how to get here, for example, you don't need to search around. You can just take a hero and just right click. And the hero is going to somehow magically map hack and realize where he's gonna go, to, how he's gonna get there. So he realized that he has to go there, get a boat from here, and then run somehow around the map. He knows the, he already knows how, and then comes over here. And uh, also another thing, when you see like red arrows in between your arrows, it means that there's a fight there. So if you want to go through this, there's a fight here. And it also a boat costs a thousand gold and five wood, but that isn't really uh, important for this guide right now. So at this point, I think I have analyzed everything. So um, let's actually load up my other run so that i can tell you like a few more things and at that point i think we will be done so over here we are at the already running um you know run <laughs> at an already running fight and as you can see here this is not the same as you see the infirmary has a tavern as a predecessor so if you want to have an infirmary you are forced to have a tavern and to start buying units and uh, it doesn't have the barracks. Barracks has nothing. Is a predecessor of nothing. Fort is nothing. The court of housing is over here at the right. Again, the Griffin. I was lucky. The Archmage Tribunal, which at the last uh, video, like a moment ago, was over here. Now it's over here. So a lot of things have changed, but it's the same again. So engineering workshop is here. Everything is exists again. Everything is exactly where it was, as as long as it's in the same line. So the lines have not uh, changed. Only the columns have changed. Uh, now, I was talking about... Uh, Conscription Center, by the way, looks like this. So, um, right now I have, like, none... Uh, let's actually create some, doesn't matter. If you throw them in, it says 290%, I can discharge. Boom. It doesn't take everything, it just takes what it wants, I can discharge more. And now I have, I get 4,750 income, and if I want to do the opposite, boom, I lose some income, and I get a bunch of units as a reward by the way it doesn't uh, it's not a good idea to go discharge in a list but if you want to throw trash away like i just did you can like throw halberdiers and uh, arbalists out and then like start enlisting them and get random other units back which might be or might not be better depending on what you believe by the way discharging as you see place a thousand five hundred gold worth of units and enlist instantly recruit a thousand two hundred fifty gold worth of units so uh, you lose if you do the swap, but you might upgrade your units by getting other units that might be better. Uh, so that's the conscription center. That's a very unique building for the order. I don't know why I explained it, but uh, it came along. So the engineer workshop, which is something that every race has, 
uh, let's you create two buildings you have to bring a hero over here so let me create a hero real quick do i have money yeah i do have money so let's unlist a hero for example let's unlist this guy so right now he is over here let's also pick up all the army why not so engineer workshop you can buy two upgrades which are permanent for each hero so each hero has to buy this very upgrade for them to actually be useful and what they do is the first aid tent is a passive item that in every fight you can revive randomly units so you might lose two units and then they randomly might revive so you literally might not lose them and they are revived at the same moment that you lose them so they are even staying in the fight and then the ballista here it just shoots once in a while within a fight and you just damage the enemy army so that's pretty simple you should always do these upgrades on every single hero whenever you can even if the hero is just a scout and running around if you have the money laying around like i do just do it otherwise obviously just upgrade those for your fighting hero uh that's uh, what i wanted to showcase and these like these little things that floated around was uh, the spells that this hero got so if you start upgrading Archives of Magic, Guild of Mages and Archmage Tribunal, you will get Mages Guild here, which is pretty much every single hero you create or just gets into the city gets all these spells. So uh, these spells are ranging from Explosion for doing damage to Bless to heal units to Summon Worms to pretty much everything. Also, because there are a lot of uh, summoning spells, as I said, that's the reason why uh, knowledge is really important. So there's that about the castle. Um, by the way, if you have like any questions about anything, just comment down below. I will read everything and answer everything. I, I'm really wanting to help people understand what's happening in this game because uh, when I first started seeing people play this, they were like, okay, upgrade this, upgrade that, what's happening, no idea, nobody knows what's happening. Uh, I mean, the, the guy who's playing most of the time knows, but uh, the rest might not. So, I have beat, in this campaign, I have beat my opponent. The game hasn't ended. I'm not 100% sure how you end the game, but uh, I mean, this is a 4x game either way, so you can just run around. It's not a, a completely a 4x game, but uh, you can just run around, destroy everybody, so... Um, so I'm just telling you that getting the enemy castle is not how you win, okay? This is not how the game ends instantly. So, if you get the enemy castle, this is, as you see, the normal castle. As you see here, Plaza of the Wild, Center of the Wild, Plaza of the Wild. These are the money gain items. Over here, third column, Fort, Stronghold, Citadel. You see, he was lucky and he didn't actually have something in between. So he could go instantly to the Citadel if he wanted. But he was unlucky because his best unit, the Trent over here, is actually locked behind this whole line. And you don't always want to go for Fort or Stronghold and whatever. By the way, Stronghold also gives you free defenses. But um, yeah, it's not really that important. If the enemy just goes over, hovers over your uh, castle and sees that it reads easy. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter that you have defenses there or not. You're just going to get destroyed. Um, and yeah, as you see, he was lacking some things, unlike in other things. He has the infirmary too. Obviously, an upgrade. The, he was double unlucky because hospital, as I said, is not really that important. And he has one of his units behind, locked behind the hospital, so that's really unlucky. Here, for example, he might not have wanted to get the guild of mages, although it's good. He has a really weird. Yeah, he's. He, look at this. Look at this. If he wants to get his archers, he has to get the tavern. So, and then if he wants to get the fort, he has to do this line. So he might not want to get the archers that early. So he's a bit unlucky. And there are also the unique buildings that he has. The Symbiotic Grove gives him one uh, wood each day. Grizzly Den summons some uh, things. Uh, let's let's not get stuck up to those. But uh, this is his building. And now, something I didn't, I failed to mention is almost every race has antique shop. Um, I failed to mention it because uh, this the order has this unique conscription building, which um, yeah they don't have the antique shop. <laughs> other other ones have the antique shop. Other ones have other things here. Most of the time, these four are the same. So Infirmary, Tavern, Mage's Guild, and Marketplace are the same. And then these two here might be unique, might not be unique. For example, for my race, this here, for example, the Engineering Workshop is not really unique. A lot of, a lot of, uh, not a lot of, some, some races have this too. Conscription Center is completely unique. For these guys, the Elemental Gate is completely unique. This thing here, summoning random elementals. I don't know how exactly this works. I haven't really looked into this uh, race that much, and only a little. And uh, the Artificer, for example, which would be this here, the Antique Shop, is not unique. So other races also have the Antique Shop. But uh, those are like the side buildings. That's also why I forgot to <laughs> tell you about the Blacksmith right away over at my building. Because it's not really uh, that important. As Artificer might be a bit more important though. Either way, the last thing I want to tell you is uh, if you don't uh, really like this. If you don't want to have random, uh, you know, uh, Moon Beasts and Golden Bucks and whatever in your army. And if you just want to have a secondary of your own buildings. 
you can just best convert building over here for 500 gold 10 wood and 10 stone and if you press this boom you instantly get the perks let's just go uh, through this real quick i don't really care you first you instantly get the perks you would have gotten if you upgraded a bunch of times second thing you instantly got to choose which ones you want to upgrade with the fort so from which ones you want the, this to create more let's go with this i guess then you instantly also get to choose whatever buildings are creating dual units so let's do this and uh, yeah that's it now this building is mine the spells have changed this has changed now it's also shining engineer shop obviously i would not do this in a normal game but i, I just wanted to show this to you so uh, there's that i guess uh by the way i think i forgot to see something this is the one i'm at let me reload this real quick the game might crash right now okay it didn't uh, i'm so ready for this to crash um yeah you can actually buy heroes from the opposite faction so you might actually want to keep the building as it is and not actually convert it to your your own so i think that's it at this point i have covered everything that has to do with buildings and uh, running around the map etc so you should be ready to not get overwhelmed by this game i hope at least that was my idea i wanted to make it so that you guys do not get overwhelmed by this game the, the game the map is huge uh, this is like the second biggest map and it's huge it might actually be the small no this is like the smallest map this is the smallest possible map and it's huge i started here the enemy started here so we were very close to fighting but uh behind me there was so much things happening and above is another a bunch of things happening and over here i think nothing would be here this uh, seems to be a bug or like a, a hidden area which i don't know about because if you see at the camera we're like off screen but uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I hope you guys understand now how the castles work. I hope uh, this is going to be helpful for some people. I hope you understand some tricks and, uh, you know, tricks like uh, create something, bring it out and then move it towards the hero so that you combine it instead of bringing the hero in because it's really important to actually maximize your hero movement because you have 22 movement every turn on this, on this particular race. Normally you have 18 these have uh, 22 because uh, you know the passive that says plus four movement when you go once in the castle i actually got this it's this one here the hostel so all of these run faster so yeah i hope this is helpful uh i was thinking about doing a very small guide on the races and the heroes too how they work and how they actually function so be ready for that if you care about that and after that i was thinking about starting maybe to do some live streaming or a run of this maybe not live stream maybe some runs on this just to showcase uh, you know my play style and uh how i play this game pretty much so i think that's going to be it for today uh the guide was a bit lengthy but uh, i wanted to cover every single aspect of the overworld because uh, you know the only thing you have to really realize at the overworld is uh, how the castle works and uh, how you can like buy units move around do your upgrades and uh, yeah fight and uh, fighting i mean you just go and fight enemies that have moderate difficulty and lower i would not suggest fighting challenging difficulties you might beat a, a challenging difficulty by spamming a bunch of spells or whatever but if you lose like half your army or even if you lose like 20 percent of your army then all those normal and easy fights are gonna become hard or challenging or whatever and then you will not be able to progress so don't do that <laughs> uh as simple as that and uh, yeah i think i'm gonna end this here I hope you guys liked the guide. If you did, then drop a like helping out the channel. And if you have like any questions at all, just comment down below and I will answer them. I'm answering, I'm reading and answering every single comment that I have. So um, yeah, I'm going to do that and I hope it helped out. I hope you're not mixed up and you understand how this game works from now on. And uh, I think that's going to be it. So uh, thanks for watching and see you guys around.